Okay, in this video we're going to go over header and sub accounts. And we're going to focus on the chart of accounts for this. Um, there are other opportunities in QuickBooks where you can have header and subs, um, but we'll focus again on the chart of accounts. So I'm going to come in here to the chart of accounts. I do have a couple of accounts in here that are already set up as headers and subs, but I'll talk to you about why we do this. So I'm going to focus on the bank accounts. Okay. Uh, there is another video in the intermediate section that talks through how to organize your chart of accounts as a whole, right? The way that we kind of suggest doing it. So make sure to check that out. But again, just focusing on header and sub accounts for now. So what does that mean? <clears throat> so a header account is going to be the highest level account that we have. So under prepaids here, right? 1250 would be considered the header account. 1252 is considered a sub account, okay? So in QuickBooks, the reason that we want to set up headers and subs is so that on reports, we can roll them up. So I'm going to create a header account by going down to new and choosing a new bank account. The header accounts have to be the same type, right? Same chart of accounts account type as um, what you're trying to put as subs. So I can't have an accounts receivable account with a bank account type as a sub there. So I choose a bank. I'm, in, I'm going to call it cash and cash equival equivalents. Okay. And for these, I usually actually leave account numbers out, but that's kind of a personal preference as well. So I'm going to say save and close. It's going to ask me if I want to set up a bank feed. This is not a real bank account, right? It's just a placeholder for us. So I have cash and cash equivalents. And now I'm going to make the other accounts subs under cash and cash equivalents. So again, first, before I do this, let's go in and run a balance sheet standard report. And you can see here, right, I have all of my different bank accounts showing up. Now I can roll up my entire bank account amount here and just see checking and savings so that you do have that as an option. Uh, but Again, let me just show you what, why we want to do this. So now I bring over cash and cash equivalents. I'm going to drag the, from the little diamond and make it a sub account, this 1110, a sub account of cash and cash equivalents. And then I'm going to drag over the 1120, 1140. Okay. So what this does is it makes these now, when I look at my balance total for this cash and cash equivalents, it gives me my balance of all three added together. All right, now I can still reconcile these accounts separately just as I normally do. However, when we go to our balance sheet now, right, I have the ability to roll up that account, cash and cash equivalents, and if I want to see the details, I can expand it. Where this could be helpful, right, so if I had another account called maybe clearing, so instead of petty cash, I had clearing accounts, I could come in here and also create a new bank account call it clearing accounts, okay? And then maybe have my petty cash accounts go under there. So again, when I go to my balance sheet, I have the ability to roll up cash and cash equivalents as well as my clearing accounts there, right? Or I could roll up my banking accounts as a whole or, you know, bank type accounts as a whole. And it just allows us to not have to show as much detail. Okay, and then if we want to see the detail, we can expand it. So when we turn our information over to like a bank, as an example, they don't need to know how much we have in our checking versus savings. They just need to know how much we have as cash and cash equivalents. Okay, so that's the purpose of header and sub accounts. In QuickBooks, you can go up to five levels down, truthfully. If you're going multiple levels down further, we probably want to look at, you know, give us a call. We want to look at why you're doing that because there are other fields that we could use to possibly track the data that you're trying to track by going so many levels down, okay? So again, I could go up to five, one, two, three, four, five. All right, the other thing that you wanna be cautious of when you're dealing with header accounts is you never want to put anything to the header account, right? When I am writing a check, I don't, you have the option, if I go to banking write checks, I actually have the option to choose that account to write a check out of. 
But when I do that, let me show you what happens. So I'm going to put in a check for $500. Okay. And say save and close. Now when I go look at my balance sheet, I'm going to have this cash and cash equivalents other, right? And it's not going to my checking account. It's not going to my savings account. And because this is just a holder account, I don't get a month end statement, right? Um, so it's not like I'm ever going to go reconcile that account. I'm only going to be reconciling the subs. So if you ever see a dash other in QuickBooks, that means that you've posted something to the header account. Okay. So the way to fix that, of course, would be double click on it, open it up, say, oops, I didn't mean to post it to that account. I meant to post it to my checking account. Right. And that other goes away. So we definitely recommend using headers and subaccounts. You can do it on the item list as well, right? We have header header items and sub items under there. Customers, we have customers and jobs. So you're going to see it in several places throughout QuickBooks, and they're really good ways to be able to roll up data and total data on reports.